Hi everyone, my name is Steve. I'm a user researcher working in games. Today, I'm really excited to talk to you about the topic of how to get games user research experience without already having a job in the industry. So I've been working as a games user researcher for around a decade now. I started with PlayStation's European team where I joined as a junior researcher and stayed there for around five years. During that time, I was exposed to a huge number of really interesting projects both from hardware, for example, working on the PlayStation VR headset, working with big teams such as on Horizon, and with smaller teams. PlayStation funds a number of indie teams to create a single game, and it was really exciting to work with those small teams and see the impact that user research can have even on small games. Since then, I've continued to work in the games industry, both running playtests, and also help teams integrate playtesting into their design and development process. I started and ran the Game Tutor Research Mentoring Programme for five years, uh, which partnered students and people who are interested in joining the industry with people who were already established, people who had uh, worked at big companies or were working at big companies and could provide guidance and help people join the industry. This is a topic I've always been very interested in and I was lucky enough last year to be able to wrap up all of my experience both mentoring talking to mentors and people who were interested in joining the industry and talking to industry leaders to, into a book, uh, How to Be a Games User Researcher, which explains what do you need to do to start a career in games user research and the skills you need to have and how to get those skills. One thing I heard in all of these conversations is how hard it is to get that first job in games. There are a few reasons for this. First of all, there are not many junior roles out there. And when there are those roles, there's a lot of competition for them. A lot of people are finishing PhDs or finishing postgraduate courses. People are very interested in games. And so it's an area that gets a lot of attention. Both those factors combined to mean that it's very hard for a new candidate to stand out. And that's why experience is really important. It's a key differentiator that helps you stand out from everyone else applying for the job. However, there's that classic catch-22 situation. It's very hard to get the job without having experience, but how do you get experience without having a job in the first place? This is a very common question that we get when we're doing mentoring or I'm speaking to people entering the industry, and it's a real problem that we want to solve. One solution that I've talked about in the book, I've talked about in mentoring, and uh, what I'm going to present today is me doing it myself, is to look to usability reviews. I'll explain in a second what a usability review is, but it's a way of practicing some of those research skills for real and helps gain some of that experience that you can then use for CVs or job applications. First of all, a bit of background in case the term usability review is new to you. Sometimes they are called expert reviews or heuristic reviews the idea of a usability review is that one or more researchers play through the game and we look out for usability issues, places where the player doesn't understand where they're meant to go uh, or might not understand what they're meant to do, places that don't follow many of the best practices around how to make games understandable and usable. As we know as researchers, this type of study isn't suitable for many objectives. We are not the same as our players, and so although we can spot potential usability issues, there's other questions we won't be able to give reliable answers to. Things like, what will players think about this game? Is my game fun? What's the best bit? What's the worst bit? It's really a test question that you do need real users to answer, but a usability review can focus on some of the uh, more obvious usability issues that might turn up in a real test. This method is sometimes used in industry, often it's less convincing than an actual usability test where you can show a video of a participant having problems or show some real data from players. And so because it's not very convincing, it's not the most common uh, method used in industry. It is sometimes so used for job applications, so it's a good skill to practice for applying for jobs. And also the case study that we're gonna look at today uh, also allows you to practice many other research skills that are very commonly part of the research process. What we're going to talk about today is how to run a usability review on a real game that is during development. We'll talk about how to find the game, what to do when you get the game, 
how to debrief that and how to work with the team and how to change that into a portfolio piece that you can share with a recruiter, can put on a blog or a website, and again, helps you stand out from all the other people applying for these games user research jobs. The first step of that, and one of the first challenges that sometimes people run into when they're trying to organize this kind of thing, is where do we find the right kind of games? Obviously you could take a game that's already been released and you can look at that, but that has some downsides. Because the game is finished, there's no chance that your reviews are actually gonna have any impact on the game. And also because you don't have access to the team who are working on it, you can't ask the type of questions that help you identify what's the right objectives and what should I be testing and looking at in this game review. One of the places I've found that is particularly helpful for finding in development games are playtesting forums. So there are forums across the internet where game developers are looking for playtest feedback on their game. A couple of examples. Uh, Reddit has its r slash playtesters forum. It also has its r slash play my game forum. Itch.io has its own forum for giving feedback. I think it's called Get Feedback. And lots of games maintain their own Discord as well for community building and also to help create a space where they can get feedback on their game from fans during development. Now, because a lot of the industry is not familiar with user research or usability reviews, these developers don't know that they're looking for uh, usability feedback. They are often just asking for playtest feedback. They want someone to play the game and say if they liked it or if they didn't like it. We can do better than that because we are professionals and we're learning about user research. We can go to them and we can explain, actually, I know you're just after, after general feedback, but I can do something more than that. I can I use my best practice and my skills to identify usability issues, usability issues that will stop people understanding or being able to play your game as you expect. There is the opportunity here to explain to them what we can do and to convince them that a usability review is both useful to what they're doing and will give them valuable feedback to help improve their game. So there are a couple of criteria to keep in mind when you're looking on these playtest forums and you can see posts for hundreds of different games that are looking for feedback. What is the right game for you to review? Some criteria I found helpful to think about is first of all, do they have time to fix their issues? Are they at an appropriate stage in development where it's they're still working on it, still interested in feedback? Hopefully most of the things on these forums will be able to fix issues. If they were too late to take on board feedback, they probably wouldn't be asking for feedback. So luckily a lot of the ones on the forum are suitable for this. Second point is, can the team handle usability feedback? Are they looking for other type of feedback like uh, difficulty balancing or other things where it's too late for them to hear feedback about fundamental parts of the game. That's something that you can work out both by looking at the original post to look at the type of feedback that they're looking for and also by following up with them to ask questions about what are they currently thinking about on the game, what are the problems they have and work out is it a useful time for them for them to get usability feedback about the game. A third criteria to think about is can I run this review? Is it a genre I'm familiar with? Is it a genre I know enough about that I will be able to look at the game, understand how it's meant to work, understand the design intent, what is it the designer is trying to do, and propose something useful uh, by understanding the game well. And the last point, and this is a discussion you have to have with that developer, is can I share what I learned? Obviously, one of the reasons we're trying to do this is to create case studies that you can talk about and share on the internet. Usually, this isn't a problem for indie developers. Any sort of press or people talking about their game counts as marketing and creates interest in their game. So that's less of an issue than it is for big studios. But it is worth checking with the developer that they understand that you want to talk publicly about the work that you do on this game. So last year, I decided I wanted to do this myself. Rather than just advising it as a mentoring activity for other people to do, that would be unfair if I hadn't gone through the experience myself and seen what it's like, what are the challenges, so that I can help people through this journey. And I spotted this post. It was for a, a first-person puzzle game, something like Portal or the Talos Principle. 
and uh, they were asking for feedback on their game, uh, beta testers specifically. So I looked at this post and I saw, do they have time to take on feedback? Probably yes, because they're asking for feedback. Do they want usability feedback? I was unsure about that, so I wanted to get in touch and ask, is it useful to get this kind of user research and user feedback, usability feedback from me? Is it a genre I understand? Yes, this is a genre I've played many other games in this uh, genre. I think I would understand how the game is meant to work enough that I could have a sensible discussion around it. And can I talk about what I do in this study? And for that one, again, I needed to ask the developer a question to see, is it okay with them? To do that, I had to make an approach. I had to get in contact with them and ask them these questions so I understood more about what would be useful to them and then I could work out, can I help them? And is this a suitable case study? The first thing to keep in mind when you are approaching people is that they don't know they want user research. As we've talked about, many of these teams have not experienced user research or user researchers before. And so they have a poor understanding of the differences between informal play testing or beta testing or just getting feedback about the game, as we've talked about, versus formal user research. So us running a usability study, identifying some usability issues and giving them feedback in a structured way. That's the thing you have to explain. And so you have to say, hi, I run usability reviews. I can help you with your game. I was wondering if you're interested in usability review. If you do sign up for it though, I'm going to ask to talk about it in public and use it as a case study. Lucky in this case, the developer was very happy both for me to do the review and also share it in this lesson that we're covering today. And there's a bit of back and forth in that. So you have to have a chat with them to work out what parts of the game are in scope or out of scope. And also when is feedback useful? If it took you six months to run the review, it's probably too late for them because they'll already have released by then. But when is are the deadlines that they have hanging over them? When are they open to feedback? When is it too late to tell them problems with their game? Once you've had that conversation, they're probably sent to you a build of the game. So you've got ready to test and you know what it is that is useful feedback to them and what's too late to give feedback about. It's time to run the actual usability itself. I think running usability review is a big topic. We could obviously do this whole 25 minutes on just running usability review. And because of that, I'm not going to try. Instead, I know there's plenty of great talks already on YouTube about how to run good usability reviews. For a start, take a look at this talk from Seb where he has done a meta review of lots of usability reviews that he has seen from students and given feedback on how to do a high quality usability review. But here's how I did it. So I started with a blank mind map. I like using mind maps and note taking and I spoke at a previous uh, conference, the Games User Research Summer Camp, about why I like mind maps and also how to use a mind map for, for note taking. I started with it entirely blank because at that point I knew nothing about the game. What I tried to do on my first playthrough was try and get as close to that real player experience as possible. So I played through the game just as a normal player would any problems or bits where I was unclear, I wrote them down. For example, in this picture, it tells me about, in the game, about density and mass, and I wasn't sure what density or mass was doing in the game. So I wrote, well, it's not immediately explained, but maybe it's explained later, because at that point, I didn't know what would happen next. And I didn't know what that experience would be later on. I did this for as much of the game as we'd agreed to play. I think it was the first three hours I was looking at, although you could probably work with your developer to work out what is the appropriate amount of time to run this kind of review for. And just to give some context, here is a little bit of the game being played. As you can see, it's a puzzle game, very similar to Portal, and it's a physics-based puzzle game. So you're given a number of tools that you can change some objects, mass and density, and later on their size, and you have to use that to solve puzzles within the game. Having played through the game once, I then did it again. This time I wanted to play more as a researcher, so taking it a lot slower, not going for that real player experience, but looking out for things where either I had got confused earlier on, and now with the context of having played through, I understood why I got confused and if it ever got better, but also looking, testing every mechanic and trying everything 
so that I can identify all of the issues in the game. So some examples of the type of notes I took on this playthrough is I noticed the tooltips don't stay on screen and that's obviously not great. Uh, it's how they're teaching the controls, but it doesn't, they disappear after a certain amount of time. It doesn't want you to demonstrate you've learned it before they get rid of them. And so on this play, I was noting all the occurrences where this happened, which is really useful later on in the report. So I can say, here's all the occurrences of this issue. And then I had one last playthrough. I understood a range of the usability issues. I'd done some work to try and describe why those issues occurred and what made them happen. But some of those issues needed more explanation or exploration so that I understood exactly why they occurred and could describe it in a rigorous and interesting way for our teams. I've talked many times before about the cause impact format for describing usability issues. The causes, what is it about the game that made this problem occur? And so I play through the game, for example, again, for that control tutorials issue, and I'll describe all of the causes that I'd seen and probe exactly how the game works so that I could describe all of the causes. Then with the impacts, I'm aiming to describe what will that do to the player? Uh, in this case, the players might miss the tutorial or they won't have learned how to play the game or how to use that mechanic and that can cause difficulty progressing. So on this last playthrough, I'm making sure I understand all of the issues in depth and can articulate them properly. And as always, you want to prioritize the issues. You might come out of your review having identified 30, 40 issues, and that's overwhelming for a small indie dev team to, to deal with, particularly ones who haven't had any history of working with user research before. Because of that, you want to identify what are the most important issues that they should focus on and help point them towards the biggest problems. I always recommend this uh, chart, which is by User Focus, as a quick way of thinking about how to prioritise usability issues. It asks a number of questions such as, does this occur in a red route? Is it a thing that the player has to do to progress? Is it difficult to overcome? Is it the sort of thing where someone might need to step in or they might need to Google it to find out how to overcome it? or will they figure it out by themselves? And also, is the problem persistent? Once you've encountered that issue once, do you know how to overcome it in the future? Or is it an issue that every time you hit that same point, you're gonna have that same issue and there's no work around each time? By thinking about all of those factors and asking yes or no questions, you can rate the severity of your issues that you've identified and then pick out the most critical or the most interesting ones to uh, prioritize when you're talking about the problems with your game team. And then on to sharing it. So at this point you have gone through the game, you've identified a lot of the usability issues inside the game, you've picked which are the most important ones, and you've described what are the causes of those issues and also the impact, what does that cause to happen to players. One way of sharing that with a game team is by making a report. That's often a very traditional way that people who work with user research expect. It's not always the best way when you're working closely with teams, there are other ways of sharing findings than writing a report. But while we're doing practice and as a case study, it's a good idea to use this as an opportunity to practice making a user research report. I've got a link to the full report of this game at the end of this uh, video. And so feel free to download it, have a look at the section to look at the issues and how I've described them. And you'll see how we go through what are the objectives, what are usability issues and what are our recommendations for what the team should do next? Again, really helpful, actionable feedback that the game developer can take on. Because we're doing this as a learning opportunity, this is a great time to get some feedback as well. For example, you should show it to a peer or a researcher who can uh, look at your issues, look how you've described them and give any feedback on whether you've articulated them correctly. I'm always happy to give that kind of feedback, so do get in touch if that's helpful. And I know a lot of the games research community will as well. If you're on the, the Grux Discord, I think there are channels there where people can give feedback and, and I know the community is always happy to do this. You want to share your report with the development team. If you are able to present it live, again, that's fantastic practice because that's a lot more like what the job is really like when you're working with real teams and you're employed to do this. Actually having the opportunity to present it to the team is good experience that you can talk about in interviews. But if not, 
sending it to them by email, the report, and then asking for feedback by email is a fine second. And what you should do a couple of weeks later is follow up with them, see what did they do with the report, what changes have they made. This again is really helpful evidence of the impact that your research has had so that you can talk about that when you're interviewing or on your portfolio. Which brings us to our last point, making it into a portfolio piece. So a report is great and great practice of actually being a user researcher and the type of thing you would be doing for the job. It's experience you can draw upon when you're interviewing, but a report isn't the same as it actually being a portfolio piece. So what you should do is consider the format that report we've made and the reports that you'll see at the end of this presentation is a PDF, which isn't great for a portfolio. It doesn't tell the story of what you did, it just shows the results. And so to share it with others, you want to tell that story, not just show the report. You want to give some context about what did you do? You contacted the developer, you identified some objectives, what did they want to learn from the study? You applied a research method and you've decided why this is an appropriate research method. You can explain why that's the appropriate research method. You can talk about how you perform the review, what you, some of the issues that you learnt, and also how you communicated those issues with the game dev team and what they did in response. How did it change their ideas? How did it change their, the game that they're making? What was the impact of your study? And you can tell that story as a blog post. I think it's a great uh, format to tell that story of, I ran this review, here's what I found, and also include some of those issues that you found, either by including the full report or some screenshots of parts of the report. And another benefit of this being a project on a real game is sometimes you get a credit. Uh, you get public recognition of, hey, uh, what I did made a difference to this game and people who play the game will see that you've had that impact forevermore. And there you have it, a portfolio piece by running a usability review of an in-development game that has a real impact on the game design decisions and the actual outcome of the final game, which is great experience that you can use for job interviews. All that remains is to actually see the usability review so that you can see what one of these looks like for real. I have put a link to the full report on the website, uh, the link here, gamesuserresearch.com slash grux. From there you can find the full report. Also some links to other resources if you're interested in doing more of this kind of thing, both a link to my book about how to become a games user researcher, and also a link to my free monthly lessons on games user research skills like we've talked about today. I would love to hear your experience when you do this yourself and creating your own reviews. And as I mentioned, I'm really happy to give feedback on you doing your own reviews. Do get in touch either by email, ux at stevebromley.com or by Twitter at steve underscore Bromley. And I'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much for your time listening today and good luck with your usability reviews in the future. All this is possible thanks to our sponsors, Playtest Cloud, Play Your Research, Balsamic, Adobe, The Book, How to Be a Games User Researcher, UX is Fine, Antidote, and Sketch.